So West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin wants to block the stimulus payment, the $2,000 checks, from going out to the working class. And this could put that proposal, which was a crucial promise in the Georgia Senate runoffs, from being kept. And so this is a very big deal. The Washington Post is basically reporting on it, saying that Manchin doesn't believe in the checks He feels that they're not going to actually stimulate the economy. He feels it's a distraction from getting people vaccinated. He feels that, you know, there's no guarantee that this money is going to help people because the people have already gotten help through the $600 and we need to create jobs more than anything else. And I have to say that even more than usual, Joe Manchin sounds like a Republican here. And this is important because in that Georgia runoff, as I noted from the top, Everyone was promising, especially in the last couple weeks, that if you vote for Ossoff and Warnock and you give the Democrats the Senate, because now the Senate is 50-50 and Kamala Harris is the tie-breaking vote as the incoming VP, if you give us the Senate, we will get you the checks. That's what Ossoff and Warnock said. Biden for a long time didn't talk about the checks, but in the last week or two of that campaign, even Biden started to say, $2,000 checks are only really possible if you take Mitch McConnell and his Republican senators out of power and put in the Democrats. And the voters of Georgia did that. They did that. And they might have had more than that reason to do that, but it wouldn't surprise me if there was enough voters in those very close Senate races that were swayed by the $2,000 check promise. And now one right-wing Democrat from West Virginia threatens to derail that entire process. But I'm not going to let Joe Biden use Joe Manchin to let himself off the hook. Joe Biden is the incoming president that won more votes than anyone ever. He needs to throw his weight around here. He needs to make it known to Joe Manchin that he has no business holding back such a central promise that his party made in these crucial runoffs. And he needs to let it be known that the rest of the Democratic Party supports this. This is one of those rare policies that most of the moderates support that the centrists support, and that the progressives, you know, the AOCs and Ilhan Omar and Bernie types, they support. They all support, for the most part, the 2K checks. This is a moment for potential Democratic Party unity, and Joe Manchin is trying to derail it, and Biden cannot let him. Biden needs to drag Joe Manchin into his office and give him the business to say, you are not going to do this. I don't care if you have the right to vote against this. This is a red line and I will punish you if you don't. And if Biden doesn't do that, then Biden is effectively endorsing Manchin's strategy. Now, look, one saving grace on this policy is that it might get a few Republicans to support it. In that pre-election phase where, you know, in the run up to Georgia, you know, there were at least a few Republicans that said they supported the 2K checks. Ossoff and Warnock ran on it, but their opponents, Loeffler and Purdue, they said they supported it. You also saw people like Lindsey Graham, and you also saw folks like Josh Hawley say they supported the $2,000 checks. So hypothetically, at least, if Manchin votes against it, but he's replaced by one Republican, they might still get it done. But it's also possibly the case that all of those Republicans willing to do that when Trump was president won't be willing to do it a few weeks later when Joe Biden is president. And you might call them hypocritical or opportunistic or cruel to basically dangle $2,000 in front of their constituents and then yank it away when the president changed from an R to a D. And you would be right, but I wouldn't be shocked if all of a sudden now, Lindsey Graham and Josh Hawley renege on their support for the 2K checks. It would not shock me. And so Joe Manchin really might, you know, know, break this deal down. It's awful. And it needs to be said, and again, I don't think this is a reason alone to criticize Joe Manchin, because I would criticize any Democrat that voted against this, but there's a particular evil and a particular irony that he's a senator from West Virginia. One of, if not the poorest states in the country, where this money would be useful and would be needed, both as survival 
and stimulus. Because when you talk about stimulus, you really do need money in local working class hands. That money will be spent on everything from rent, will be spent on everything from food and all these basic necessities, much of which will be purchased from businesses in the state and in the communities. Not all of it, of course. Some of that money is going to be spent on online shopping, and of course it will be. But much of that money will be spent locally and will help those local businesses. And when those local businesses have more money, they can maybe hire more people back. They maybe don't go out of business. It means that jobs can be created or jobs can be saved if the working class has money to spend. Like that's a principle of basic human decency economics. When the working class is secure, the economy is far more likely to be secure. Working class people buy all the necessities necessities society produces. Rich people, they might buy another yacht, but rich people can only buy so many loaves of bread, so many liters of milk, so many pounds of basic meat. Like, you know, if you if you're looking at basic supplies, the working class needs to be strong. So Joe Manchin doesn't get it or he doesn't care. His people need it more than maybe any other state. And it's good for local economies. This is a gut check moment for Joe Biden. I don't want people to let Joe Biden off the hook here. Yeah, it sucks that Joe Manchin is basically a Republican. And it sucks that your 50-50 in many ways is actually 50 Republicans, 48 Democrats, because or 59-41 or what have you, or 51-49, because Joe Manchin is a Republican in a lot of ways. But you need to keep your promise here. You didn't give the caveat, oh, we're going to get this done if we get to 50-50 and I can talk to Joe Manchin and convince him, but no promises. That's not what the Democrats said. They said, give us the Senate and you get 2K. That's what they said. No ifs, ands, or buts. 2K in exchange for the Senate. The voters of Georgia kept their deal. Joe Biden needs to keep his. Are you a president, Joe? Are you a leader? then you need to crush Joe Manchin here. You need to let it be known that while there are differences of opinion in your party, the working class starving should not be a matter of opinion. Get your job done, Joe, and do your first thing as president correctly. 